Welcome in to Texans Today, everybody. I'm your host, Jeremy Chugs, and coming up on today's show, a little rumor meter going over the latest storylines around your Houston Texans. If you didn't join us on our show last week, whenever we introduced the Texans rumor meter, I'll have a little refresher course before we get into today's stories. But before we get started, I have a quick question to ask you. Uh, a popular sports podcast, you know, around this time, maybe you've heard them, maybe you have it, but they do a thing called Mount Rushmore season where they're, you know, given their top four of different categories. And it had me thinking, what's your top four guys? What's your Mount Rushmore for Houston Texans? It can be players and coaches. It can be, you know, whatever around the Houston Texans. But let me know, who would be on your Texans Mount Rushmore if you had to make it? Four slots for you. I'm interested to see what you have to say. I think we'll have a lot of the same answers for some people, but I'm interested to see what y'all have to say for who's in your Texans Mount Rushmore. Go down in the comment section and let me know as a little refresher course on our rumor meter. Toro heads is what I picked for it. If I get something zero heads, a story zero heads, that means it's fake news not happening. One head, there's a small shred of truth that maybe could happen. Two heads, people are talking and gaining a little bit of traction. Three heads, I think it might be pretty likely if I'm giving something three Toro heads. And if I give it four, that means it is happening. H-Town, hold it down. You better believe it. Now that we went over that, let's get into our first story of today's show. Should the Texans be worried about Colts quarterback Anthony Richardson? I'm going to give this one two Toro heads. People are talking. It's gaining a little traction. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of people are underrating Anthony Richardson just for the fact of he didn't really play much last year. He got injured in that game against the Houston Texans in the beginning of the year. I believe it was week five, and we didn't see him for the rest of the year. Gardner Minshew started for the Colts the rest of the way. So Anthony Richardson, I think he's a little bit of a mystery when it comes to this season. Bleacher Report, they dropped an article saying, you know, one major factor for every divisional race in the NFL. And for the AFC South, they said Anthony Richardson could be the key to maybe the Texans not winning. This is what they had to say. Indianapolis Colts quarterback Anthony Richardson showed dynamic flashes as a rookie last year, but he suffered a season-ending injury in week five. With Richardson as their starter, the Indianapolis Colts beat the Houston Texans on the road and the Tennessee Titans, who still had veteran quarterback Ryan Tannehill under center. Before he, his arrival in Indianapolis, Steichen helped Justin Herbert break multiple rookie passing records and had a hand in Jalen Hurts' MVP caliber year in 2022. As one of the league's best offensive play callers, he could utilize Richardson's dual threat playmaking ability like he did with Hurts. And, I mean, talking about Jalen Hurts' MVP season, if they could get that out of Anthony Richardson and with these Colts weapons, this offense is going to be dangerous. I mean, we look at the guys up there on screen right now. A.D. Mitchell, who they drafted in the second round. I thought that was a steal in the draft. He a, Amazing year at the University of Texas last season. Michael Pittman Jr. just got a new contract. Jonathan Taylor has been a top 10 running back since he's entered the league. Josh Downs, a sneaky good year last year for the Colts. And Alec Pierce, I think he's a little bit of an underrated wide receiver. So their weapons, they have plenty of them going into next season. Now, I don't want to get it twisted at all. The Texans will be the favorites to win the AFC South, and deservedly so. They have C.J. Stroud, who had an amazing rookie season. They got better weapons. Their defense, I think, improved as well this offseason. They should be better on all sides of the football going into this year, and they won it last year, so they should be the favorites. But I don't think it's going to be a cakewalk like a lot of people think it's going to be. I don't think, I think a lot of Texans fans think it's going to be an easy win of the division for the Houston Texans. I think people think the Texans are just going to sleepwalk their way through the regular season. And I don't think that's going to be the case. The AFC South has gotten better. The Colts, I think they are a lot better team than te people give them credit for. The Jags, obviously, they still have, you know, a team that, Pushed the Texans last year, almost won the division as well. Same with the Colts, where the Texans won it in the last week of last year's season. And then the Titans, even though they don't have a you know prolific passer or a you know real identity on the offensive side of the football, they have a scary secondary after adding Legarius Sneed. So this AFC South division might be a lot better than people think 
going into 2024. And speaking of all the games that the Texans are going to play this year, if you want to join the party, if you want to join all the action, subscribe and join us for our live watch parties that are going to be going on this season. A lot more games this year in primetime. I'm going to be able to go live so much more for watch parties and i want you all to be there so if you want to have fun if you want to you know a tailgate atmosphere where we're all hanging out rooting on the texans this is the channel to be go down and hit that sub button or go to youtube.com slash texans tv and join the number one texans youtube channel out there here at texans today the latest texans rumors story number two the texans are they cutting robert woods I, I, I was teetering on four, but I'm going to give this three Toro heads. I think it's the writing might be on the wall for Woods, and it, and it stinks because I don't have anything against Robert Woods. I think he is a fantastic player, and his time in Houston, he was a good player for the Houston Texans. But the, the thing is, this wide receiver room is stacked for this team. They added Stephon Diggs on top of Tank Dell last season. He had a really good rookie year until he got injured, and then Nico Collins had a breakout year last year. And on top of that, John Mechie has been getting a ton of hype this offseason. So I think that combined with, you know, I don't know where he would fit. If you're a wide receiver five or wide receiver six, you have to also be able to help on special teams. And at this point in Robert Woods' career, I don't think he's going to really give you anything for special teams. And I don't know if teams were going to want to trade for Robert Woods. I mean, maybe a, like, conditional seventh round pick for him a certain team but I don't think you're going to get a ton in a trade for Robert Woods and as we look at the Texans wide receiver depth chart as I said the other day we have three wide receiver one so there you have it Nico Collins Tank Dell Stephon Diggs already loaded right there John Mechie has been you know lighting it up in minicamp and OTAs Noah Brown I think this team really likes him as well and then for that last spot it might be Ben Skoranek. It might be Xavier Hutchinson. It might be Steven Sims if they really want the electric return, man. But I just don't see it being Robert Woods on this team. And along with that, if you cut him, there's not really any, you know, cap concerns. The dead cap would be uh, $4.75 million. The cap savings would be $5 million. So it's kind of a wash if you are able to cut Robert Woods during that 53-man cutdown day. I, I, like I said, all love to Robert Woods. I hope he finds another team find, he can find a role. Because I think Robert Woods on certain teams could be their wide receiver four, wide receiver five on a team that maybe doesn't have the depth that the Texans do at wide receiver. But going forward, I just don't see where he fits on this Texans roster. And speaking of the roster, coming up, the Texans' depth concerns at a certain position. I'll let you know what that position is in just a quick moment. But... Before we get going into that, I want to show some love to some new subscribers here on the channel. If you haven't subbed already, what are you waiting for? You've all, almost made it through the whole video. Go down and hit that sub button. But I want to show some love to some people who are hitting the sub button. The real DJ Blazin, Guy Barnes, It's Rod, Eagle3396, and Michael Taylor. Shout out to all of you. These are some of the newest subscribers on the channel. Thank you so much for joining the Texans today, family. It does not go unnoticed. Thank you so much. If you want to see your name on a future video, go down and hit that sub button, hit the notification bell, comment on some videos, and hey, let's get this community rocking and rolling in time for the regular season. Last story on today's show. Texans need edge depth? I'm going to give this one Toro head. It's, it's a little bit of a talking point in my opinion because when you look at this Texans defensive line, yes, obviously the, fr the first four names I think are fantastic. Will Anderson, Danico Autry, Foley Futakasi, Daniil Hunter. The starting unit, that's not in question whatsoever. But you take one step under that. You know, the guys who are coming off the bench, are we sold on, on these guys on the defensive line and on uh, at edge? I mean, Derek Barnett came over from uh, the Eagles last season, and he played pretty well towards the end of the year for the Houston Texans. Had a decent uh, couple games with uh, the Texans, in my opinion. But if anything happens to Will Anderson or Daniil Hunter, do you want Derek Barnett being your starting guy? And then also, I really hope – this story is able to come out and he's able to really, you know, prove all the haters wrong. Not haters, but I mean, prove everybody wrong and prove everybody like he still got it. Dylan Horton, who was just battling cancer this past season, is coming back from injury. I really hope that he's able to play well, but 
I don't know where he's at physically, and I don't know where he's at in terms of, you know, being able to help this team this season. So if the Texans are looking to add somebody, I actually was talking with some guys around the office, and there's some interesting names that could be cut candidates for other teams. First off, I talked to our 49ers host, Chase Sr., and he was telling me former second-round pick from USC, Drake Jackson, could be on the chopping block for the 49ers this year. He's had two years where he's had three sacks, has had some injury issues, you know, had a knee surgery this past offseason. So some of those things could play into a factor, but that could be a name if he gets cut. The Texans look to at least add on their practice squad or add during training camp to add some depth. And then Peyton Turner, the former edge rusher for the University of Houston, a first-round pick by the New Orleans Saints. He's been a little bit, you know, mentioned to be a cut candidate for them. So if these two guys are cut, the Texans could look to add some depth at that edge position. And if not these guys, there are a couple free agents that are worth noting. Emmanuel Ogba, who a couple seasons ago was really good for the Miami Dolphins, is currently a free agent looking to play for a team in a 4-3 scheme, which Texans do run. I think that could be a potential fit. Yannick Ngakwe is another name, but he doesn't really give you anything in the run game, he is basically a pass rush specialist only. So maybe if the Texans want to utilize somebody like that, they could look in Yannick Ngakwe's way. Or Jerry Hughes, who's been on the team uh, for the past couple of seasons, is now a free agent. If they really need some depth, obviously he is familiar with this team. He's familiar with the coaching staff. So that could be an easy free agent that you go out and sign at the vet minimum if you need another guy. So those are all some options that the Texans want to add some depth at the edge position. That's all I have for you on today's show, folks. If you want to continue the conversation, if you want to talk some more Texans football, go follow me on Twitter, at Jeremy Chugs. You know where to find me. My DMs are always open if you're trying to talk some ball. And don't forget, you made it to the end of the video. Congrats on you. Go down and hit that sub button for daily Texans videos all year long. More watch parties, more fun to come here on Texans Today.